Hello, welcome to the Canyon Country Discovery Center. I'm Kendra. First of all, we'd like to thank everyone who has participated in our iNaturalist Fall Insects of the Colorado Plateau project. This project will continue to run throughout the month of October and, as of this moment, has over 250 observations of over 100 different insects. That's pretty cool, but it's not all that surprising. Autumn is a wonderful time to do any sort of naturalist observation as plants and animals are busily getting ready for the upcoming winter. Today, we'll be learning about three different insects, where they might be found, and how they have adapted to the upcoming winter months. These three insects have been observed in our iNaturalist project, and the photos we'll be using today are also courtesy of participants in said project. Our first insect is the monarch butterfly. Monarchs, like all butterflies, drink nectar, which is why our butterfly garden behind me is chucky jam full of native flowering plants, such as thistles and milkweed. However, there's no butterflies in our garden at the moment, mainly because they've already passed us by. Monarchs, in response to the upcoming winter months, migrate. They go from north to south, in the winter and then from south to north in the spring. They're heading down to Mexico at the moment and are probably somewhere around Arizona. It's quite an amazing sight to see these butterflies migrate, clouds upon clouds of butterflies passing you by, and actually a group of butterflies is called a kaleidoscope. Seems fitting, doesn't it? Next up is the stick insect, specifically the shorthorn stick insect, which is the most common one you'll find around here, if you can find them. Stick insects are about two to four inches long, give or take. They shockingly look like sticks and are sort of a golden brown color, much like this grass surrounding me. That's intentional. Stick bugs are supremely good at camouflage, so much so that they'll even sway in the wind as the breeze passes by to make themselves look even more like an inanimate stick. As a result, when stick bugs are on their plant of choice, they're supremely difficult for you or any predator to find. As a matter of fact, it's much easier to see a stick insect when it's on its way to a new home and wandering about. Stick insects have taken the easy way out when it comes to winter adaptations. Come fall, the adults will lay their eggs and then they'll simply pass on to the stick bug afterlife, leaving these eggs, which look like seeds, behind. Because they look like seeds, ants will take these eggs and put them in their nests where they'll stay nice and warm until spring when stick bugs hatch and the next generation of stick bugs is ready to rock and roll. Last but certainly not least are our friends, the ants. Ants play an incredibly important role in the ecosystem as evidenced by the sheer number of ants in this world. There's over 10,000 different species of ants 150 of which live right here in Utah. Ants also do a multitude of things for the environment. Remember our ants who helped out the stick insects? Ants are also omnivorous, meaning they eat both plants and animals. And the only limitation on what they'll eat is what they can pick up. As ants can lift many times their body weight, not a lot escapes them, making them important cleaners up. Ants have adapted to winter by going into hibernation. They will pack their anthill full of food, gather it deep inside, and simply sleep the winter away, waking occasionally to eat a bit, but for the most part, just sleeping, a lot like bears. Thank you so very much for joining us today. I hope you learned a lot about some of our resident insects, and now I'd like to issue a challenge. There's over 150 different species of ants here in Utah alone. How many can you find? And how many other types of insects can you find as well? Go out, explore, and let us know. You're free to post any pictures to our iNaturalist project or to our Facebook page. Thanks again, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.